My dear Wormwood, I note that you say about guiding your patient's reading and taking care that he sees a good deal of his material as friend. But are you not being a trifle naive? It sounds as if you suppose that argument was the way to keep him out of the enemy's clutches. That might have been so if he had lived a few centuries earlier. At that time, the human still knew pretty well when a thing was proved and when it was not. And if it was proved, they really believed it. They still connected thinking with doing and were prepared to alter their way of life as a result of a chain of reasoning. But with the weekly press and other such weapons, we have largely altered that. Your man has been accustomed ever since he was a boy to have a dozen incompatible philosophies dancing about together inside his head. He doesn't think of doctrine as a primarily true or false, but as academic or practical, outworn or contemporary, conventional or ruthless. Jargon, not argument, is your best ally in keeping him from the church. Don't waste your time trying to make him think that materialism is true. Make him think it is strong or stark or courageous, that it is the philosophy of the future. That's the sort of thing he cares about. Hey everybody, welcome back here to the library. On this month's episode of The Inkling Review, we're looking at C.S. Lewis's classic novel, uh, Christian Apologia, The Screwtape Letters. Now, before we get started, of course, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit like or subscribe. If this is your return visit to the channel and you hadn't hit like and subscribe yet, go ahead and do that now so that you don't miss out on the fact that we have new content every Sunday here on the channel. And as I said, this month here on the Inkling Review, we're talking about the Screw Tape Letters. Now... When I just read that opening line is this wonderful twisting that happens in these letters. These are not advice to us as Christian believers. It is advice from a demon in hell to his nephew on earth who's trying to tend souls to damnation. And this is the entire basis of the screw tape letters. Lewis, of course is famous for the fact that his literature was filled with, with Christian ideas. They're inescapable in Narnia. They're inescapable in the Space Trilogy. They're much more subtle, but yet inescapable in his novel Till We Have Faces. And the funny thing about this, Lewis started his life as an atheist, and became, and, but over time slowly changed mind until he was, as he described himself, the most reluctant convert in all of England. Now, this was not his first novel uh, at, of Christian apology. That first one was called The Pilgrim's Regress. Uh, but this is probably his most famous one. Now, the entire book, as you could tell from those first sentences, are told in letters. It's not uh, a novel built on... Uh, any strict plot. Uh, we are coming in and out of the work of Wormwood as he is seeking help to try and steal souls from heaven. And that's what makes this book so unique. We are learning about Christian lessons and Christian morality uh, by talking about it inversely. So we're looking at the weaknesses of humanity and individuals uh, because these demons are trying to manipulate those weaknesses. And we also look at the strengths of humanity and individuals because Screwtape is trying to make sure he directs Wormwood away from them. Now, it is impossible to summarize the plot of this whole book because there's not really a plot in the strictest sense because of that. But... What this book is really known for, really shows off, is something we saw in Lewis with Narnia, and that is his ability to be playful with language. Um, and there are so many wonderful turns of phrases throughout the book, and let me read you my favorite, uh, is where he is warning uh, Wormwood about the differences between what they want and what 
the enemy or heaven and God wants. God really does want to fill the universe with a lot of loathsome little replicas of himself. Creatures who life on its miniature scale will be qualitatively like his own. Not because he has absorbed them, because, but because their wills freely conform to his. We want cattle who can finally become food. He wants servants who can finally become sons. And that's my favorite line, but there are lines throughout the entire uh, book that are equally powerful. And all, and, and, and all the way until the end, when ultimately Wormwood loses the soul permanently. And, and again, let me read, read you at the end. Um, and all that sustains me, this is again, screw tape writing to Wormwood. All that sustains me is the conviction that our realism, our rejection in the face of all temptations, of all silly nonsense and claptrap, must win in the end. Of course, that is blatantly untrue according to Christian theology. And he ends with, Meanwhile, I have you to settle with. Most truly do I sign myself. You're increasingly and ravenously affectionate uncle screw tape. So things do not go well for Wormwood in the end. And also, uh, most editions of the book also include a somewhat epilogue that was written much later called Screw, T screw Tape Proposes a Toast. Uh, very much the same uh, uh, s style of all the other chapters in the book. Uh, but this is, and there are 25 of those of those letters throughout the, uh, throughout the entire thing. So, it, again, I, I can't summarize the whole thing. You'll just have to go read the letters yourself. So what are the strengths of the book? Well, Lewis's ability to be pithy, which he's unmatched in the Inklings. No, the, all the, the ink, four main Inkling writers we've talked about all have incredible command of language, all have the ability to be playful with language, uh, and create incredible imagery. But Lewis is the one who is pithy. The one who has those single sentences that really stand out for their cleverness. Uh, you know, Tolkien is maybe the most uh, poetic. Uh, Williams may be the most intense. But no one matches uh, Lewis for the pithy one-liners. Um, I, I read you the example that I particularly liked earlier, but that's uh, the, this comes throughout the book and always keeps turning. But the big strength is by being this, by shining a light on us and our faith in the inverse, you get to learn lessons that you thought you already knew, or maybe better put, that you didn't know you already knew. And it just gives you an extra ability to think about your faith because it's coming at it from this different way. If you're not a Christian, um, you certainly would get less out of this book. But I think, in a lot of ways, the way he's talking about faith is just simply talking about also human behavior. Um, and so there's a lot you can learn from the book about just human and, uh, behavior and individual behavior, um, even if you're not Christian. So I, I think uh, Lewis's use of the inverse here really opens up new avenues uh, in your own brain's ability to reason out human interaction, and particularly human interaction in regards to God and faith. So what are the weaknesses of the book? Well, the weakness is that the book's a one-trick pony. Um, each letter is about the same length, um, but it does get old after a while. I actually took three different times of trying to read the screw tape letters before I got all the way through. Um, Again, Lewis is wonderfully pithy, but um, you sometimes get a little tired of the repetition of what uh, of the trick, which is uh, the demons talking about heaven and earth in the inverse of how we normally talk about it. Um, that's, so that's the big weakness in the book. But over, um, but overall, it doesn't diminish the lessons he's teaching. But it does make it a little more difficult to get through.
So how do I rank the book? Well, I'm going to have to rank this one four out of five stars. It may be famous, but um, you know, it took me three times to get through it. I could see the brilliance of it by the time I got through it, but it did take me three times, so there's no way it can get five out of five. But this is definitely uh, Lewis's um, imagination and reason really playing out at maybe its finest in fiction. Um, and so it definitely earned the four out of five stars, even with the, for me, the having to struggle to get through it a couple times. All right, so coming up next month uh, on the Inkling Review, we're going to be looking at Charles Williams's. It, really, we're going to be doing two in one. We're going to be looking at Charles Williams's uh, poetic cycle, the Arthurian uh, Arthurian po uh, poetic cycle he did in two volumes, Taliesin through Logos and Region of the Summer Stars. Uh, so I'm really excited to be talking about that one next month. Uh, but as I said in the beginning, don't forget to like and subscribe because we've got new content here on the channel every week. Every Sunday at noon is uh, when we are our new episode. So make sure you come back next week, and we'll see you again next month. Y'all have a great day.